manga recommendation videos are all the same. We always hear about the same manga that we've known about for years. So here are some brand new underrated manga that you need to read. Ogami is a world-class assassin, bad bitch for a wife, with a daughter and his own sidekick to assist him. He's the number one hitman in the world, except He's divorced, lonely, never graduated middle school, and he might be slightly autistic. Kill Blue follows a legendary hitman sent on a secret undercover mission as a middle schooler. On a mission, Ogami gets stung with a poison that causes his body to change back to when he was a kid. Not only does he have to deal with his undercover mission, he's also a socially awkward old man who doesn't understand socializing. His mission is to find this girl and get in close to try to infiltrate her family's company and find the cure for his illness. The issue is, everyone else wants to get in too. Nah, no, that sounds so fucking weird. It did sound Ogami has to fight off world-class, legendary assassins with his 12-year-old body, protecting this girl from her pursuers, all the while keeping up his act as a middle schooler and trying to figure out basic social skills he's never got while trying to fix his family on top of it. Kill Blue's action carries a lot of weight, and the humor lands very often. The gags are funny, and the weird age shit would take me out, but it's not weird here and he very clearly dislikes the idea of being around middle school girls like that which is refreshing. I'd say the most fun the manga has comes from subversions of action scenes and fights. Seeing Ogami as a kid navigating through life trying to figure out how to fit in is really interesting and it's a lot of fun seeing how he applies hitman knowledge without blowing his cover as a middle schooler. The art is crisp, it's pretty style specific to him, and it has amazing action sequences. And Kill Blue's action carries a lot of weight and the humor lands non-stop. I'd say say the most fun the manga has comes from subversions of action scenes and fights. Like the shit he does and the marksmanship he has is just like... I've been reading Kill Blue for a while now, so it's older than others on the list, but it definitely deserves to be checked out. Not gonna lie, I haven't been keeping up with it, but it's definitely interesting and it just didn't go where I thought it was gonna go. But don't even worry, because every other manga on this list is even better. I had the idea to put some shine on them, because they're quick, easy reads. Also, as an enlightened manga elitist, I don't read trash, so you can be assured none of these are going to get axed. Probably. Okay, I'm tart. At the party, fuck wrong The art of Diasporazer is what drew me in. It's messy at first, but so crazy yet bold and decisive it kept pulling me in, and I was in it for the long haul, especially since the art started improving. Also, the whole thing is just crazy. This old man is legitimately psychotic, and their dynamic is actually a lot of fun. This- Oh wait, fuck. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, fuck. Uh, I hesitated to pick up Diasporazer because the art and paneling was a bit muddy at first, but it kept just barely pulling me along until I eventually got invested. Absurd is the best word for this manga. Cosmic sorcerers are magic-wielding aliens conquering the stars, and this man is a warrior that's dedicated himself to slaying each and every single one that comes to Earth, and this dumb kid is just a hitchhiker. Tazakuni is traveling through town and overhears some kids planning to rob this old man. So this kid decides he needs to intervene and save the old man before they can attack him. But the old man refuses to run away from his own home and convinces Tazakuni to stick around. Typical boomer, <laughs> typical boomer shit. The problems will just solve themselves, everything is fine. So he convinces Tazakuni to stick around, and also maybe that psychotic old maniac happens to be the strongest warrior in the entire universe. Clearly, Anderson has defended the Earth from galactic wizards for decades. He has nothing to fear. So this is their story. With Tazakuni as his sidekick, he's not afraid to take on some punk kids, except 
they're not just kids, are they? A cosmic sorcerer has shown up on Earth and given these kids cosmic armor in exchange for attacking the old man. An old man out of his prime, they ambush him and catch him off guard. And once they have him where they want him, they burn down his whole house. Things are looking rough. It's the old man with a shotgun against two cosmic sorcerers and he has to protect this stupid ass kid who decided to jump in and make everything worse. And all he has to pack him up is Nikazuda who happens to be the strongest cosmic sorcerer in the entire universe. He effortlessly destroys these two cosmic armor thugs. Where does that leave him and clearly Anderson? And what's he doing pretending to be a weak kid backpacking around Earth? Specifically South Africa. <laughs> The art of Diasporazer is what drew me in. It's messy at first, but so crazy yet bold and decisive it kept pulling me back even when I didn't want to. Also, the whole thing is just crazy. This old man is legitimately psychotic and their dynamic is actually a lot of fun. This galactic conquistador has to hold this earthling back from running wild. The action is so fun and vibrant and you can't tell what's going to happen next, especially in a fight. Also, shh. Shit is so absurdist and graphic. Chapter 2 and this guy literally <laughs> blows this kid's fucking face apart because he put a portal underneath his skin so that he could teleport in when they were least expecting it. Just seeing the different characters bounce off of each other until it devolves into brainless fights is so satisfying. I Hope You're Happy Lemon is a romance drama comedy. Normally, <laughs> I would vomit right here. But the main character actually seemed like a normal-ish guy instead of a pitiful, whiny, introverted, zero self-esteem cuck. And it starts with him actually going on a date with a girl that he likes. So I was like, all right, let, let's see where this can go. Surely it won't get completely fucked up. And I was right because this shit is amazing. Big improvement already. Normally his crush would walk past him and he'd be like, <laughs> Senpai just walked next to me. But he's normal. How crazy is it? So the story is about this guy. His entire life, his best friend has been this girl named Lemon. Lemon Nishikawa. <laughs> and for a while they were going out in middle school. She was really close with him. Things were great. They were in love. Eventually though, unfortunately, all good things come to an end. And she felt that they had to break up. The reason being that she was cheating on him. And it was with three guys. Three, th Three guys? You're 15! What the fuck do you mean, three guys, bro? What are you doing at 15 to be like this? Such a fucking catastrophic life L. So early on, right out of the gate and BOOM! First love, lifelong childhood best friend turned girlfriend. 8th grade, ninth grade is describing how she got passed around. That's another echelon of cucking. Your 15 year old girlfriend can't even just say I cheated on you and dip. Nah, she had to clarify three different individual guys were and she dumps you <laughs> with no fucking warning. Oh my god, oh my god. Core memory shit. Now imagine four years later and you're in college and you move on. Four years of your life have passed, yet you still have nightmares about that shit. <laughs> And you're a film student to boot. Pick a fucking struggle, bro. So you finally recover from your soul shattering L. And you're in the process of getting a new bitch and she's fine as fuck. You're trying to focus on some new shit. Now imagine you see this girl that scarred you, gave you PTSD for life. You've been having cuck nightmares for four years because of her. And she just walks in your elevator like it's nothing. And she's just so casual, acting like she saw you last Tuesday at Trader Joe's stocking up on Soylent. It matters so little she doesn't even remember she talks to you as if nothing happened meanwhile homie is having a cuck nightmare about it every single night to this day and right when you think you're done you get this bullshit but as long as you keep your shit straight you'll be fine after all it's not like you're going to wake up the next morning in her body 
and it's not like you have to go through her life and realize that everyone loves her and she's really nice and has lots of friends and dozens of guys asking her out and paying for gifts and she's a genius going to a high level university all the while you're a film student and you've barely recovered from a four year old cucking just barely talking to a new girl while your ex has been living like a celebrity this entire time at this point I'm thinking, oh my god, maybe she's the protagonist and you deserved it, bro. I don't know. Shit's just not going straight for you. And it's not like the girl you're about to go out with is actually her roommate and best friend. I mean, come on, she'll fuck up your life, bro. She was in your body getting felt up by big, muscular men. Bro, take your eye off her for one single night and your body is getting resized by the martial arts club and you're waking up to that. Okay, but real talk, me personally... If my first love cucks me with three different men, scars me for life, and then years later we switch bodies, I'm fucking turning into Spider-Man if you know what I'm saying. Oh, uh, also, apparently she didn't, she didn't even cheat on him with three guys. She just panicked and made up some random excuse, I assume, because she felt like they were forced to break up, So, which is even funnier because, like, how does your mind compute that? Like, I, I would love to see the thought process. Oh fuck, I'm breaking up with him. I don't have an actual reason. Fuck, what should I say? Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, uh, I've actually been getting dug out by three other guys. I I'm dumping you, bye. The female mind is truly a wondrous thing. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, it's a joke, that's a joke, no it's not. Anyways, the art is nice and cute and satisfying for some reason. And it's a nice, silly little read, so I highly recommend it. Shibatarian is... T what? What the fuck am I even supposed? am I supposed to even say? I know that sounds like a quirky YouTuber. <laughs> OMG guys, this is so crazy, what do I even say? <laughs> but no, <laughs> you read this shit and tell me how I'm supposed to describe this. Okay, so... A boy is buried up to his neck under a cherry tree. He was practicing his role as a tree for the school play when some punks came by and buried him up to his neck. Eventually though, a lonely boy finds him and he sets the boy free. Sato is a delinquent. He plays sports and people like him, but he's pessimistic and pushes others away. He looks down on them and he can't connect with them. But over time, it's different with this boy. His infinite optimism shines through, and it makes socializing so much easier. Sato just wishes everyone could be like Shibata. But when Sato first met Shibata, he didn't even want to hang out. Shibata invited him to his house, a huge mansion so big, they never even had to see Shibata's parents. They had a massive library of movies, and they watched them until sunrise. Shibata wants to keep hanging out with Sato, but Sato's hesitant. Sato has a rough life at home though. His parents neglect him and he doesn't fit in, so he eventually opens up and Shibata becomes his best friend. Every day they watch movies together. It's their one escape from outside worlds, a place they feel accepted, where they can breathe and live through the medium of art and relax. As time passes though, a school cultural festival is around the corner and the two of them decide to make their own movie for the festival. It sounds like I just laid out the plot, right? <laughs> nah, that's barely even the background of the background of the background. So Shibata and Sato decide to make a film. Shibata writes the plot, but it's never good enough for Sato. Shibata rewrites draft after draft after draft, but it's still just not good enough for Sato. Sato doesn't like Shibata's endings, but Shibata insists it has to have a happy ending. He spends weeks staying up late to write it. Sato spends weeks staying up late to edit it. Eventually though, the time comes, and the two get the film done with their classmate Watari as the main actress. They bring it to the cultural festival and get ready to play it, only to get rejected. The soccer team is playing their match on the screen. Sato freaks out and almost starts a fight, saying that their video was supposed to be next. And in response to that solid and fair point, my man is like, kid, who are you? Who the fuck is Shibata anyways? Y'all are irrelevant, no one cares, no one wants to watch your guys' boring, shitty movie go somewhere. Sato and Shibata desperately want to show it to the class, but in the end it's pointless because the class votes on it and they decide to watch the soccer team's highlight video instead. Sato is crushed. Shibata still wants to try though. If they can just 
ask the teacher the next day if they could just use a different room. If they could have another chance, they could show everyone the movie that they worked so hard on. But Sato doesn't even want to anymore. The one time he tried to go out and do something with his life, he was shut down. Even if they showed the class their movie, the kids watching are stupid and they won't get it. Sato is done making movies. Shibata and Sato are done trying to get their film shown. After all the effort put into trying to change, Sato closes himself up again. Sato just wishes that everyone could be more like Shibata, because then they would understand. They could see the movie and appreciate it, but in the end, they're all trash that treat Sato and Shibata like dirt. Sato can't help but be honest and confess that if he were to make another movie, it would be about a horde of Shibata taking revenge on them, killing all of those assholes in their class for making fun of them. If he were to make another movie and try again, it would have to be like that. A display of anger, taking their art and using it to show the unjust fury he feels from being written off and thrown away. Of having his friend written off and thrown away, the one person closest to him. But that's Sato. That's not Shibata. Shibata doesn't want that. He's kind. He doesn't want to fight or harm people. Shibata has no interest in violent movies. Shibata has no interest in making movies like that because he's not that type of person. Shibata is only interested in movies with happy endings. They just can't see eye to eye. Neither of them can understand the type of movies that the other one wants to make. So Shibata and Sato go their separate ways. And if that sounds like an entire manga, well, that's just the background of the background. Five years pass and Sato never saw Shibata again. He meets the girl that acted in their film and she confesses she didn't even know Shibata was real until she met him the week before. Shibata asked Watari to give a movie ticket to Sato so they could meet again and see a new movie together after all of these years. You'd think it would be some weird situation or a dramatic confrontation, but even after their fight five years later, they see each other and it's like not even a day has passed. They click immediately, and they watch the movie excitedly, and afterwards, they had a lot to think about. Shibata didn't like the movie, but Sato loved it. Shibata is so negative, he says the movie is only popular because the world's full of idiots, and the ending was way too cheery. He hated it. But Shibata loves happy endings, so who is this? Shibata looks at Sato, and tells Sato he's finally got a name for that movie about hordes. A name for that movie that Sato wanted to make. A world with a gruesome ending where everyone is killed. He's got a name for that movie Sato wanted to make so badly. Shibatarian. Red Cat Ramen is about a red cat that makes ramen. I did not expect to love this manga so much, but just holy shit. Maybe I'm a mind maybe I'm a mindless fucking ape, but this just makes me so hype for some reason. So this girl walks into a ramen shop and she gets served a bowl of ramen by a cat. And by this point, I'm already fucking hooked. Like I don't know what it is, but something about this panel just hooked me immediately and I don't know why I love it. I guess I just love the way the cats are drawn, and this is like so fucking cool to me for some reason. Look at him dishing out food like that, little man is grinding. It's just a bunch of cats running a ramen restaurant, I don't know how else to describe it. Just the way the cats are drawn does something to switch my brain on. Like look at these little guys just walking around with jobs and shit. They even got a tiger in the back making noodles. This whole manga is just a fucking aesthetic to me I guess, like this shit is kinda just fucking awesome. Look at him, he's fucking cooking up! He's cooking! The pig is raw as fuck. Un look at him, untold sauce. His name is Boonzo. They all have like a little handkerchief. Handkerchief? It, like, how can you not enjoy this? And the chapters are quick, easy reads too. God, I fucking love this. I'm just imagining it right now. I would do anything to see this shit animated. Like, I would sacrifice a small child if it meant getting this in anime. Fuck it, a big child too. The author of Red Cat Ramen soft blocked me on Twitter. I don't know how he even knows what soft blocking is, but I'm 99% certain, like positive, I know for a fact he soft blocked me. I can already hear the whiners coming. 
Oh, but Spare Mangle, Furry Dragon is like a year and a half old. Yeah. Yes, we've heard about Dan Dan. Yes, we've heard about Undead Unluck. Figure out a new fucking manga. They're, they're already old at this point. Uh, it's every goddamn recommendation video is the same. Unironically, this manga is so fucking fantastic. It hurts to think about how long I have been deprived of it now. Like fucking crack. I am going through withdrawals. Top one manga of all time with only six chapters out. I don't know what illness is preventing Shin Goat Masagoki from delivering peak fiction, but I pray with all my heart he recovers. Ruri Dragon is about a girl named Ruri who's also a dragon. Go fucking read it. You can read it right now. It's the greatest manga of all time, enough said. And I guess this section was too short, so I'll talk about another manga. Uh, hi. This video took an un- Shut the fuck up, you stupid This video took an ungodly <laughs> amount of time to make. But wait, because I'm not done. Real quick, I want to rank the manga here from my favorites and let you know which deserve to be checked out the most. First though, I want to say, my favorite manga off this list at this moment has to be Shibatarian, including Ruri Dragon by the way, but Shibatarian is just so good and has such deep film references and lore. It's a mix of a few different horror films, but also foreshadows how the manga plays out and so many things from those early zombie and monster movies are reflected in the events of the manga. The art can be really weak at times, no lie, but the paneling is so cinematic and just amazing. The shots and visual design is stellar. It's like reading a movie and the horror is so great. I really love it right now. Number two is Diasporazer. It's a mini-series which is a bit weak, but the themes and ideas and art is so good and out there. It makes me a huge fan, especially with the ending and thematic philosophy. I love it so, so much and it really impacted me. Diasporazer is fantastic, and it'll probably stick with me for a while into the future. I hope your Happy Lemon is just enjoyable. I really, really like the art. It's pretty funny, Lemon is bad as fuck. It's just fun seeing the goofy shit, and as of now, it's keeping my interest really well. Red Cat Ramen, number four, is just a simple manga. I like it a lot, but haven't gotten nearly into it like some of the others. Kill Blue is cool, but just really sadly not stand out enough. And it's nice, but it's 40 chapters deep and just not doing nearly enough as it should be. It Lastly, as a bonus manga for me cutting this video short, uh, I was gonna talk about this manga, but it looks so nice and so- <laughs> Update, it's fucking trash. Here's SK Gay Girl- SKK Girls. And I know some of y'all are sick freaks, but please just be normal in the comments. I literally just read this manga and wrote this right now, like an hour and a half before the video is supposed to go out, and I want to make a full segment on this one too, but whatever. The world of SKK Girls follows Saya, Katana, and Kodachi, three young girls young girls walking around a rundown, abandoned civilization. It's weird at first, and everything is completely empty, but the way the panels are left open and the mood and tone, combined with the art style and underlying feel of the manga, you know something isn't right. There's already so much mystery set up in chapter 1, but the real standout here is the art and shot composition. Some of this has elements of western comic line art stylizations incorporated wonderfully into a dark and scratchy industrial manga style, with interesting panels and some really off-the-wall work with perspective, particularly fisheye lens shots. I love that so early on, this manga is already seamlessly integrating cutesy moe girly cartoonish line art with dark astonishingly detailed sets of abandoned and rundown buildings. Yet the rougher parts are so polished and deliberate it feels real to the rest of the world that has cleaned more structured line art. And just off of chapter 1, I would easily put this at 3 for now and there's only 2 chapters out. Crazy! I gave you 7 manga and the ones in part 2 are even better so do us both a favor and subscribe and violate that like button because we are just getting started. Drop me some other recommendations though, because I always love being put on to some great series. Fuck that, that better have been recording or else I'm gonna fucking f If you find me under your skin again Maybe we could be friends
friends Maybe that'll make too much sense